This is the Tankstar Science Big Meiosis Foldable. And big in this particular case means three pages big. So that when the pages are cut along the seams and taped, they create a foldable that fits neatly into one binder without overlapping the binder rings. If you want to use this for an interactive notebook, just cut along the dash lines to make the foldable smaller. Now let's take a tour of this foldable. Now, meiosis is typically a very difficult topic to teach. There's a lot going on and it's difficult to fit it all on one page and that's why I've chosen the three page format so the students can see all of the diagrams and have enough room to put in their descriptions of the events occurring in each stage. So I like to start off meiosis with interphase so that the students can tell the difference between uh, duplicated chromosomes and unduplicated chromosomes so they don't have the impression that DNA replication occurs in meiosis, it occurs before meiosis. I've then divided the rest of the foldable into meiosis one and meiosis two. So this like really allows them to separate the two main stages of meiosis in their minds. Now, when it comes to meiosis one, you can see that there's prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. And if you actually take a look at the uh, diagrams I've provided, here they're colored, but if students choose not to color them, what I've done is that for each homologous pair, I've left one white. And this one that I've colored in blue, if it weren't colored, it's actually in gray. So the students can distinguish the, uh, the two members of each homologous pair from one another. Now, once you get to the end of meiosis one, we begin meiosis two. Many diagrams, especially if they're on one page, don't have enough room to show what happens to each of the cells after the telophase one, so they just show one. But here I show both, and I think showing both really helps students understand uh, the concept of meiosis better, and for them to actually know, too, that at the end of it, you get, in this case of spermatogenesis, uh, four different genetically unidentical sperm. Of course, if this was oogenesis, you'd end up with one large ova and three polar bodies, but this is the easiest one to start with, so you can talk about oogenesis after this. But here as well, I've uh, given boxes so that prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2 can be explained and described all on one page. At the end of the day, this is an amazing graphic organizer for them to understand all of the events that occur in meiosis. There's no way that this can be done on one page, at least not without a lot of confusion and skipping a lot of steps. So I really believe that this is a vastly superior way to teach meiosis. And um, I hope you have that experience of using this and uh, having success in your classrooms as well.